welcome to the second video about VSM. In the first video, you learned what a value stream and a value stream map is, and why and when you should use a value stream map. In this video, you will learn how to create a value stream map and which icons are used in almost all value stream maps. Finally, some tips for mapping are given. There are four steps you need to go through to create a current state of a value stream map. First, you should determine the product family. Then, you determine the material flow. Third, you determine the information flow. And finally, you perform an analysis. A product family, also known as a process family, is a group of products or services that go through the same or similar processing steps. Different product families result in different value stream maps. Therefore, in relation with your organizational problem, you should determine which product family you are going to map. To determine the product family, it is useful to create a matrix with processing steps and equipment on one axis and the different products on the other. Then, you should look for products that share around 80% of the steps. After you determine the product family you are going to map, you start with diagramming the material flow. Therefore, you should start at the end of the value stream when the customer receives its product or service and collect data of the current situation to look at the material flow. To draw the material flow, you should understand which icons to use. Every value stream map has some basic symbols. For example, the supplier and customers. These are external sources. Then there are some specific symbols for the material flow. Here you see a process box, in this case the milling process. In the example you see three other process boxes, with welding, painting and assembly and inspection. Within these boxes you see the next icon, an operator, which indicates the amount of people involved in the process. Below you see the data box, including, for example, cycle time, change over time and uptime, but could also have other information, such as the number of defects or shift rates. Normally, the data you collect over here is related to the organizational problem you want to solve. If the organizational problem is related to improving quality, for example, you should have data in these boxes that tells you something about the quality of these processing steps, for example. Furthermore, you see inventory. Sometimes more information is given, such as the time parts or products are waiting, as you see over here. This dashed thick arrow indicates a push system or push arrow, where material is pushed through the flow. The thick arrows indicate material receipts and shipment. Besides, you see movement is done by truck in this case. You could also use pictures such as a plane or a ship. The symbols we just discussed are typical for our current state. If you want to map a future state, there are some additional symbols that you could use. We come back to these later on. Then. After you determine the material flow, you should determine the information flow. As discussed in the introduction video, the thin arrows indicate the information flow. These are linked to the central production control process. Here you see arrows shaped like flashlights. Those icons indicate electronic information flow. Most of the time, the information flow with external parties, for example, is electronic. Then, these straight thin arrows indicate manual information flow. Extra information is given to clarify the frequency, based on a daily, weekly or monthly schedule. Again, there are some more icons to use when you start a future state map. For example, when you want to start working with Kanban. Again, we will come back to these icons. The fourth and last step is the analysis. If you have drawn the information and material flow, you need to perform some analysis activities. First of all, 
you should analyze what the value and non-value added time is. You can find this information in this box. Here you see the total lead time of 65 days. And the value added time is only 70 minutes, as you can see in this example. And as you know, all elements that add no value to the product are called waste. Waste only adds cost and time, so this is what we should get rid of. However, be aware that waste is really a symptom rather than the root cause of the problem. So we need to find those root causes. Then you can use the eight types of waste and lean principles to create your first overview of the situation. If you want to start making a future state, Rudder and Shuk describe eight key questions that you should ask yourself. These are the following. First, what is the tuck time? Then, will you build to a finished goods supermarket from which the customer pulls or directly to shipping? Then, where can you use continuous flow processing? And where will you need to use supermarket pool systems? 5. At what single point in the production chain will you schedule production? How will you level the production mix? What increment of work will you consistently release? And the last one, what process improvements will be necessary. If you have or found an answer on these questions, you will be able to draw a VSM for the future state. However, there are some extra icons that you should use, as said before. The additional icons do you see over here. For the material flow, you see three extra icons. Material pull, instead of push, the first in, first out principle and a supermarket. For the information flow, you see a lot of icons which are related to Kanban. You see a production Kanban or pool Kanban or both in batches. And furthermore, you see the signal Kanban, load leveling, Kanban post and sequenced pool. The sequenced pool icon is used as a sort of Kanban for a supplying system that can produce the parts needed in a short period of time. It can be useful, but it is little known and not used that many times in real value stream maps. Furthermore, there is a Kaizen lightning burst. These icons are used to highlight improvement needs and plan Kaizen workshops at specific processes that are critical to achieve the future state map of the value stream. Then, last but not least, some final mapping tips. First of all, you should go to the Canva and see what really is happening on the shop floor. Do not only trust interviews. This is the specific icon for this. Go and see. Second, use real times and don't trust calculated times. Again, if you need to get these times, go to the Gamba. Third, make it yourself easy and use a pencil or post-it when drawing the VSM. You can easily erase or change things and sure this will be happening. Begin at the shipping end and work upstream. This way you will begin with the processes that are linked most directly to the customer. Finally, Make sure everybody understands the VSM. If people map different segments, there will be no one that will understand the whole. So, this is the end of this video. We went through the four steps of creating a VSM and we discussed the icons that are used for current and future state of the VSM. Finally, we hope you will use the mapping tips when you start drawing the VSM.